obviously I know how hard these guys have worked since since August. So, um, you know, to be able to accomplish one of our goals, um, certainly not the only one, but to be Big Ten champs means a lot. Uh, I think it means a lot to the guys in the locker room, but it does mean a lot to the school, our alums, and, and everybody around here. So, um, and someone said it might have been our first one this year. So. Um, I think even even more important because um, we want to represent obviously the school and it's important for us to do that. Um, but you know, obviously not the the best start and shame on me. Um, I don't think I did a very good job getting these guys ready. Um, but credit to Ohio State coming out strong. Um, you know, after we get a couple, uh, I thought they were just a little step faster um, than we were. Um, whether it was just. Um, you know, on-ball positioning or slides or kind of getting caught staring at the ball. And I thought their pick play was good. Um, and then offensively, in that first quarter, we were kind of taking the first opportunity, whether it was the first shot or the first look. And, and we had some short possessions. Um, but uh, to give the guys credit, you know, they kind of just stayed with it. They, they caught their breath. You know, being down 7-3 was how we going to respond. And I had a lot of confidence in these guys. I just know how hard they work. I know the way they're wired. Certainly these two guys are, are, are examples of that. So, um, you know, guys just kept grinding and grinding. And uh, I thought this was good for us um, to kind of have to kind of come from behind. I mean, it's going to happen at some point. I just didn't know when. Um, just because I think you know our league is good. I think we have a good um, schedule. Um, so to be able to kind of go through that and kind of realize, okay, here's how we do it, um, I thought was really good. Um, but again, at the end of the day, pr proud of the guys. Um, certainly in the middle of the field, uh, the face-offs became huge as the game went on. It felt like Luke and the wing guys did a better and better job. And, and that gave us more opportunities. We got more momentum. We kept getting the ball back. And the guys got just a lot of confidence. And they started finishing their shots, which uh, obviously always helps pick up. I'm Wayne Viner from Viner Four Gates. We make your company work. I'm Arthur Smith with Viner Four Gates. Two-factor authentication is a must-have in today's world. Security training for your company is a must. The crooks are getting smarter. We have to give you the edge to fight back. So coach, um, it seemed like they had a lot of personnel changes and it looked like they were running like six pure attack men on offense at times. And that those pick plays were really confusing things, especially in the middle of the field. What'd you guys do at halftime to make that adjustment, especially on those interior plays they kept getting? Well, they, they do a great job with, with the pick game. They have all year, um, and they're, they they kind of straddle the line of you know they'll they'll as you're you know they have good dodgers, so you have to play the ball, and then they you know will get near the pick, and at the last second, you know they kind of just get to a spot, and they're well coordinated, um, and they rub off that pick and. You know, at times at film, there was a little bit um, moving um, at times, and, and they've been called, um, but it's a little bit of a, if you do it well, it's problematic because you either get leverage if you, if you don't switch, and if you do switch, now you have, a, you know, an attackman against a short stick, which is obviously not anybody's, um, um, obviously, goal, but um, they were getting leverage, and then, then it's like, okay, well, if they do get leverage, we're going to have to slide. And I think at times, and I'll let these guys talk about it, I'm not sure we were as organized as they really wanted to be. And I don't know if we communicated quite as well uh, early, but I think they did better as the game went on. Uh, of just going, all right, who's going, um, you know, and, and making sure we covered the inside. But again, Ohio State been doing that all year long. They've been doing a really good job with pick game, and, and they've been finishing. So um, again, as the game went on, I thought our guys did a better and better job. So I'll let you guys speak to that. <clears throat> yeah, I would just say, um, in terms of the sloppiness in games like this, I kind of find it exciting when, you know, we don't play as great as we want, and we're still able to come out the, with the win. Uh, just so is the fight and resiliency of this group. You know, we kind of just kept saying in the huddle, stay in the fight, stay in the fight, stay in the fight. Uh, and being able to take punches and throw some back was uh, really huge for us today. And like I said, got a lot to improve on, which is exciting because, you know, there's so much that we can get better at individually and as a group. And uh, we're going to. Um, yeah, you kind of mentioned it, but uh, I was just going to ask uh, for anyone who wants to answer. Um, you guys were down four there. You called timeout. Um, just what was it like in that huddle? What was being said? And where the older guys maybe and you guys speaking up and, and trying to you know, keep the Yeah, um, you know, I think that the great part about this team is, um, you know, we have a lot of older guys who have, have been together for, for quite some time. Um, there's a lot of voices in this locker room. It doesn't just come from, you know, the same guys every day. Um, you know, a lot of times there's, there's a quiet voice in the back that steps up when things need to be said. And, 
I, I credit Coach Tolles. I, I credit all the coaches. They kind of step back at times and just let us take take control um, because they have that belief in us and that trust in us because we are such a close group and we've and we've gone to battle together. And you know, I think it's a credit to the guys in the locker room that we've earned their trust for them to be able to um, to have that belief in us. But yeah, that that huddle. I don't think Coach said a word. Um, you know, the guys just came in and, and, and we just reset. It was about, you know, chipping away one at a time, getting a ground ball that leads to a clear, that leads to a good possession, that leads to a goal and do it over again. And, you know, in, in times like this, Brett said it, this was, you know, I think this was the best game that we needed all year. Um, you know, at times it's been easy, at times it's been sloppy and, and we've gotten away with it, but we needed a little test. Um, and, you know, I'm super proud of the guys, super proud of our leadership, super proud of how everyone kind of just stuck together, um, believed in each other. Um, and, and like I said, it was just a ground ball that led to something that, that led to something. And we just kept repeating that process every single day, finding, falling back on the simple things. And, and that's what, uh, you know, dug us out of that hole. There was a moment in the third quarter where you guys ran what must have been the defensive textbook fast break maybe of all time. Uh, you came down the left side, got a fake off, and then I'm not sure what you want to call that move, but you'll get to describe it in a moment. Tell me what you saw on that play. Yeah, I think I can speak on behalf of everyone on our team. When you see Rome Pugliese coming down the field trailing, you got to get that man the ball because uh, he's done a great job all year of you know, that, that shot and uh, putting it in the net. So as soon as I saw him trailing, I kind of knew I just had to get him the ball. and. I feel like he almost read my mind a little bit there. Did a great job of slowing down and kind of staying behind the pack and uh, was able to put it on a stick and, and he took care of the rest. Okay, so do you have a nickname for that move you put on? No, I mean, that's just backyard lacrosse. Um, you know, I'm grateful for the, for the coaches and the guys that, you know, they have to trust in me to do that. And, you know, in that moment, um, mm -hmm. you know, I, I'm usually shooting it from the outside and, and he kind of slowed down there. So just kind of gave him a, a quick face dodge and, and it worked out. Um, but, you know, credit to Brett for getting that big ground ball and getting up and out. Um, that, that started the play. So uh, if it wasn't for that, that, that possession and opportunity would never been possible. Hey, Josh, um, the trophy, obviously, there's uh, still a long way to go. But, I mean, what is that, um, just, you know, being able to, to be like the Big Ten you know, champions, uh, still a long way to go. But what does that moment feel like? Yeah, I think. Uh, you know, whenever you have a game like this, and as Coach said, it's, it's one of our goals that we have and it's something that's really important to the program. I mean, there's so many good teams in our conference, and uh, to be Big Ten champs means a lot. Uh, and, you know, you got to enjoy those moments. That's the beauty of it, the journey, how much we put into it. And to have days like this, it, it really is special and something you got to soak up. But uh, I love the experience and, and the trust I have in this group to kind of enjoy the moment, celebrate, uh, and be back to work on Monday for a great Hopkins team. Just on to the next one. That's been the message all year. Uh, so we'll keep it going. Nikki. Yeah, Coach, uh, there comes a combination after that ball kind of began. Uh, what ended up being like a 10 2 run at the end of the game? How does it feel seeing your offense click like that uh, in the fourth quarter? Uh, it was great, you know, and I think you got to give Luke a lot of credit. Um, you know, we went seven out of nine in the fourth quarter, and um, even in the third, you know, he gets a goal, um, and I think that was the first time we had gotten it to two, I think. Um, and then you got to, you kind of have to live with, you know, you go forward and he scores that, and then we have another one, and um, you know, the, those plays happen so fast. He threw it to Murph, and it was just a little, little fast for him, um, and just had to kind of bite our tongue, and you know, like we're, we're going to keep pushing the ball, and you have to live with some of that stuff. Um, and the same thing in the first quarter, like. The beauty of the team, we know we can score or at least create opportunities, let me say that. Um, there'd be more opportunities, so there's never a sense of panic. Um, just felt like we were just not you know, patient enough a little bit. And, and again, uh, players make plays, so you, you kind of have to be careful. You can't put handcuffs on them. But we, we also were kind of telling them, listen, just know, like, and these guys kind of talked about it on the way up. They're, they were maxing out the, the shot clock, and we kind of knew that going in. Like, they would take it all the way down and be very methodical. And, and you know, and even if they don't score, it shortens the game. So, you know, this is kind of the way it's been the last few years. Um, and I don't think that's a bad strategy. I'm not being critical at all. It's just kind of the way it's gone. So we just need to deal with it. Um, and I thought our guys, you know, did a good job with it. And then if you have short possessions, you know, you kind of have to remind the guys, I'm not telling you, you can't go to the goal, but 
what I can tell you is if you look at our body language on defense, they're getting tired. So you're trying to make sure you balance that because you still got to stay aggressive, but you can be a little more selective because uh, they are an organized defense. I think they're well coached defensively. Um, so if you just come down and try to take a shot in 10 seconds, I don't think it's to your best uh, advantage every single time unless it's, it's really wide open, you know, and, and maybe there's a breakdown or something like that. So um, we got a few of those late, but I thought early we're trying to force those things and they were buttoned up and did a good job. And again, I was just worried about these guys over 60 minutes getting tired because their offense was doing a good job. You know, they were getting leverage and they were finding guys inside and finishing. Um, and I thought Logan, when we needed him, I, I, don't, I don't think he had a million saves today, but I thought almost every save was a quality save. Um, and we kind of knew that going into it. You know, they weren't going to take a lot of bad shots. There were going to be a lot from the inside. We worked a lot this week on inside shots and, and guys coming up the hash or coming from around the goal um, and guys, you know, kind of going from the wings, going under. And I thought he did a good job with that stuff. Anyone else have something? Otherwise, we'll close the flames. Right, uh, one quickie is, th did you consider Ohio State's goalie to be playing hot early on, or is that more your shot selection? Um, listen, I think he did a good job. I think you got to give guys credit. Um, you know, I, I thought we may not have shot as well as we would have liked. I, I thought maybe at times we rushed some things. Um, we kind of, I think we telegraphed some of our shots. We, we dropped our stick and went low to low. And a veteran guy, a senior, when you drop your stick, he's going to match you. Um, and then in tight, you know, at times we would redirect it quickly. He did a great job of staying high, which is what you want your goalie to do. Uh, and he's a big guy. So if you're not going to, you know, if you're not going to take shots from more in the middle of the field, he's going to take up a lot of goal. Um, Danny Morris was a guy that played that way for us. And if you took shots wide and low, Danny was really good. Um, and I think it was really good in general, but the more you got to the middle, the more there was, you know, the more goal there is to defend and the more he has to move. So um, I thought we got better quality shots. I thought we worked for better quality shots, um, but give him credit. I thought he played great. Um, he's really good. He's a kid that's been kind of waiting for his opportunity. They brought in a transfer this year. They brought in a transfer last year. Kids stayed with it and, and give him credit. He was terrific today. All right. And for the guys, what's it like playing before about 6,500 fans with the band today? Yeah, I thought the band was a really cool touch. I, uh, I think that was the first, yeah, definitely the first time they were uh, here this year. And it uh, just shows you know, how, how important Maryland lacrosse is uh, to the state, to our school. Uh, and anytime we can have Turt Nation behind us, it gives us that extra confidence. And they were huge today. Uh, stayed with us the whole way through. We never felt like they were, they were out of it. And uh, definitely gave us a little energy boost. Roman, when you come down and there's 100 kids waiting for autographs, what's that do to you? Yeah, I mean, it's a cool feeling. Uh, it's something that you dream of, you know, I'm sure. Brett and I both dreamed of that growing up, um, you know, and we're just uh, grateful to to be able to be here at Maryland and, and be on this journey and have great friends and, and great brothers in the locker room, uh, great coaches, and you know, we're a family here. Um, you know, I think I told the guys before the game, um, you know, the train's gonna end here soon. Um, you don't know when we're gonna, you know, be kicked off at any stop. So um, let's just take a deep breath. Uh, let's take a step back and, and enjoy the moment. Um, enjoy the opportunity. We only got so many left in, in Bird and, and so many left uh, in general. So um, just happy that, you know, we get to go on it with these guys and, and continue to, to, you know, bond and, and grow and, and keep building that love that we have for each other. Um, hopefully it, uh, it keeps turning into something special. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone.